Within the past few minutes, Israeli troops have fired tear gas at residents in the West Bank village of Bilain. They were holding a demonstration against the Israeli separation barrier which cuts through their village. Their protests held every Friday have become a symbol of Palestinian anger against Israel's illegal encroachment of Palestinian land. Jackie Rowland is in Bilain for us where this week's march is just getting underway. Uh, Jackie, I can see some, it looks like tear gas behind you. What's going on? Yeah, if I can just interrupt you, Jane, um, we need to show you that the Israeli troops have actually come over the separation barrier. My cameraman is showing you now, you see, they've actually been over um, to throw from very short range tear gas against the protesters. Basically, what's going on here is that the protesters come up to the barrier, as you can see here, the separation barrier. There's more tear gas going off behind me. Here, the barrier is made out of barbed wire and steel. Elsewhere, you're familiar probably with the huge concrete slabs that mark the wall. Um, and the residents of the village of Bilain... Oh, the, the residents of the village of Bilain come every week Oh, I may have to stop soon because we've been gassed right here. Anyway, the residents of Bilain come every week to the village to basically make the point that this is their land that has been stolen to build this wall, their land which has also been stolen to build the illegal Jewish settlement of Modin elite, which is just beyond the wall. And they're also making the point um, that no amount of tear gas, no matter, they're throwing straight at me. Sorry, we're under attack. <coughs> okay, uh, Jackie, are they're you... They're obviously trying to take us off the air. Right. I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. It's not fatal. I'm still here. But the I mean, soldiers are basically throwing tear gas Did you see where that came from, Jackie? Right at us. Yeah. I beg your pardon? Uh, did you, I mean, did you see where that came from and was there any warning? No, they threw it straight at us. Um, it's quite obvious that we're the target now, not the protesters. Incredible. Yeah, okay. And so you've just seen there very graphically while we've been on air um, the kind of tactics that the Israeli army is using um, against uh, people who are protesting non-violently and indeed members of the media here. Um, we're not throwing any rocks. Um, we certainly don't have any weapons here. We're just um, basically bearing witness to what happens every week in the West Bank village of Berlin. And of course, this is just one village, um, only one village that's had its um, land seized, stolen, confiscated by the Israelis. The same story is repeating right across the West Bank, but Bilain has become a symbol and an inspiration to other Palestinian villages in the way it has stood up um, really to the, the kind of brutal tactics that the Israelis use to try to crush their resistance. I know, Jackie, I mean, quite an incredible scene there, seeing uh, the Israeli army firing at you while you were talking to us on a rather draconian response to what's happening uh, because of Israeli policy against Palestinians. Now, to try and redress some of the issues uh, as far as settlement activity is concerned, Benjamin Netanyahu has said that uh, he'll consider freezing illegal settlement construction, but not quite yet. What does that mean for the Palestinians? Basically, what Netanyahu is doing is he's trying to juggle uh, two conflicting sets of demands. On the one hand, he has the Americans and the Palestinians and, in fact, most of the international community pushing for a freeze of all settlement building in the West Bank. But he's also under pressure from members of his own government, right-wing politicians who are absolutely opposed to stopping the building of settlements. How can you have a freeze in settlement building and continue settlement building at the same time? That's what Netanyahu is trying to do. So by approving um, a number of new housing units that, uh, where work can start, and then maybe later agreeing a temporary halt in building, it becomes completely meaningless because for the few months while this official halt um, is called, they will still be building the houses that were already approved. And by the time they finish building those houses, the temporary freeze will be over and it will be back to business as usual. Um, basically, from the Palestinians' point of view, this doesn't represent any meaningful change in Israel's apparent policy to continue building on occupied Palestinian land in defiance of international law and really jeopardizing any chance of a two-state solution based on exchanging land for peace.